Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of VGC Prep. Today's the last of the post-commentated battles, I think. Um, this one is actually for the Nugget Bridge Major, which I am in. I am... Well, I'll, I'll give you what, how I'm doing after the battle. Um, so this is against Artemis Flynn, and um, his team... I decided to bring my uh, Mega Camera Up team to this round, because I felt, you know, like it, it was better than the last round that I had. <laughs> Um, so why not? So his team was Heracross, Raichu, Aegislash, Gardevoir, Suicune, and Talonflame. So he only had two potential Megas, Heracross and uh, Gardevoir. Now Heracross could be quite an issue for my team. Um, not in, I, I would say like, you know, I have ways of dealing with it, but since I'm pretty weak to fighting and my, my, um, Cresselia would lose this to Mega Heracross, it could be a problem. Um, but I do have my camera up, so it's like, you know, it's like kind of like a trade-off there. Um, so, you know, I was looking at his team, and I kind of figured, you know, a camera up Cresselia lead would be the best. Sort of forgetting that Mega Heracross has the ability, Heracross and Mega Heracross have the ability to one-shot my Cresselia. Um, which I don't think is a big deal, but whatever. So I started off with, um, camera up and Cresselia. Thinking that that is my, going to be my best play, especially since, you know, it hits everything but the Suicune super hard. And I decided to bring Cradillia in the back in case he started off with Suicune, because, you know, obviously Cradillia can come in, eat that up, and then do some good stuff, especially if I can get Trick Room up. Um, so, like I said, you know, I start off with Camerupt and Cresselia, and um, he actually starts off with Aegislash and Heracross. Um, so this is kind of what comes into play. I made quite a, a really bad play this first turn. Um, I'm gonna Mega Evolve and go for Heat Wave, you know, because obviously they're both very weak to it, um, and go for Trick Room with my Cresselia. Uh, the, the two things that I forgot, which is really unfortunate, it's gonna come into play this turn, is um, Aegislash gets Wide Guard, and Mega Heracross can one-shot my Cresselia. So, that's exactly what happens, and I do end up losing my Cresselia here with no Trick Room up, and uh, my heat wave does not go off, which is really, really, really unfortunate. It's a very bad play on my part. Um, I'm sure if I run Citrus Berry on Cresselia, I would survive that pin missile, which is actually kind of interesting to note, because um, the Citrus Berry gives you enough survivability to survive probably at about 13%, or 13 actual HP. Um, I would think. So I bring in a, a Dusclops here, you know, I'm figuring, okay, that's probably my best bet. Uh, we frisk him, we find weakness policy, which is a little unfortunate, um, because that, that's gonna, it's gonna be hard to beat that, the Aegis Slash there. Um, and he actually close combats into me, and surprisingly, I take that really well, um, considering it's a Mega Heracross. Um, but unfortunately, he actually doubles into the camera up. Now, I had, I, I, honestly, I had really thoroughly considered protecting that turn with camera ups, because uh, what else is he going to do? He's either going to go for Wide Guard or Shadow Ball the Dusclops, um, and I wasn't really sure if I would survive close combat, um, and with just Cradley in the back, these two can very easily beat me there, so I, I really should have just gone with my gut there and gone for the Protect. Um, now, he protects with the Heracross, and I go in for the burn, and uh, I was just really hoping to beat it there. And unfortunately, Cradillia just lets me down and does not one-shot this Aegislash, proccing the Citrus Berry, which me uh, the, the weakness policy, which means I have basically no way of winning this battle um, at this point, because he still has all four of his Pokemon. I'm only down to Dusclops, and it's just, it's very unfortunate here. Um, so, I I'm just going to go for the Will-O-Wisp on the Heracross, because... This is the best I can do. Uh, Nightshade probably won't take out Aegislash there. Um, so my best bet is to, to, to make it so the Heracross can't even take me out. But unfortunately he does Shadow Ball, man. It's like, well, oh man, you know. But honestly, you know, it was a pretty bad first turn for me, I'll be quite honest with you. But what was good about it was that I, I learned a lot about his Heracross and Aegislash. Uh, I learned that he had Wide Guard and Weakness Policy, which meant that basically... I have to get one if I'm going to attack the Aegislash, I happen to attack the Aegislash and mean to kill it. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of what I had to do there. So I'm gonna lead off with the same Pokemon. I'm not gonna bring Cradley in the back. I didn't think it was gonna be super useful this time around, um, because you know he had the Aegislash, the Heracross, and if I can't beat those two in the in the first round, I'm gonna be screwed. Now I know I brought Tyranitar and Ferrothorn in the back, and the reason I did that was because since I wasn't bringing Cradily, I wanted to bring Ferrothorn for Suicune, and I wanted to bring Tyranitar in general, because I needed that Rock Stop. He did have the Talonflame. Um, he, uh, Tyranitar also can take Gardevoir pretty well. It can 
it can take Aegislash pretty well, and it, it can do a lot of damage to them both. So that's that was kind of the thought process behind there. So let's let's go through that. Um, and like I said, I didn't want to bring Cresselia because you know, against his Heracross Aegislash lead, honestly, Dusclops uh, Camerupt is going to be the most threatening. So that's what I'm going to do. So he does end up starting off with Heracross and Aegislash again. And, um, you know, like I said, you have to aim to kill this Aegislash, because otherwise you're going to be in a pickle. Um, so he's going to Mega Evolve, I'm going to Mega Evolve, it's pretty obvious. Now we know that he has Wide Guard, and it's kind of a mind game right now. Is he going to go for Wide Guard? Is he not going to go for Wide Guard? I know that he cannot take out my Dusclops in one shot right now. Even if he doubled into me, Heracross has nothing to hit me. So I'm thinking, he's not going to double into the Dusclops. He's going to close combat the, the Camerupt, and he's going to Shadow Ball the Dusclops. Am I right? I hope I'm right. Please be right. Is this what he does? And it is what he does. Except, he actually doubles into the Camerupt. Now, I did not expect that. I definitely expected him to um, just kind of attack the Camerupt and attack the Dusclops. But, um, oddly enough, he did want to go for that Camerupt, because as we saw in the battle before... Um, he basically had nothing. So he goes for a uh, King Shield here, and I do believe I went for a Heat Wave, or maybe I actually, I don't know, we'll see. Probably went for, oh no, no, I went for an Earth Power, that's right. Um, and I burnt the Suicune. So now, you know, the Suicune's in, and I don't have Cradilly, but I'm also thinking in my mind, he knows I have Cradilly. Is he really gonna go for Scald this turn? Is he really gonna do that? I don't think he is, because then he'll just be giving me a plus one. If anything, he might just go for Ice Beam. Um, so I actually just opt to stay in with my Camerupt and go for an Earth Power on the Suicune to get as much damage as I possibly can on it. Um, fortunately, he actually switches into the Heracross here, so it's going to take a decent amount of damage. You know, it's, it's, not, it's, it's resisted, so it's not going to do a lot, but um, I ended up doubling into it because, you know, Suicune would be an issue. Um, so I'm kind of happy I, I predicted it correctly there and he does go for the protect here um and you know Br brave bird is gonna happen it's not gonna take anything out it's gonna do a good chunk um but it's not gonna take anything out it actually does a little bit more than i thought it would i thought it would do a little bit about half but he he shows that he's life war which i did write down um and i didn't go for the heracross here because i figured i still have trick room up if he wants to bring in the age of slash next turn that's fine but Br uh, trick um talonflame can actually beat me through Trick Room, so I have to get rid of Talonflame. Now, in comes Suicune, and again, you know, I'm still thinking he's probably not going to attack the Camerupt. I'm not really sure why he would. He doesn't really have anything to... I mean, he's going to go for the Scald or whatever, but that's fine, because why would he if he knows that I have the Cradily in the back? So I'm kind of, like, bluffing him, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to switch out to Cradily. I'm going to do it, but I'm not actually doing it. Um, now, I went for Nightshade on the Heracross, and I was really, I was like, oh no, but what's really cool is uh, Nightshade doesn't actually proc uh, weakness policy, which is pretty awesome. So he actually does go for Scald this turn, which is unfortunate, but it's not like, you know, the end of the world. I do still have um, Tyranitar, which can heal, handle um, Aegislash, but be because we have both Suicune and Aegislash on the field right now, um, my best bet was to actually switch into Ferrothorn here so I can get, you know, more defense, get some Leech Seeds up, you know, get some good stuff. So he's going to actually Shadow Bomb my Dusclops here, and, and it's, he's going to do actually a little more than half, which is very odd. Um, I predicted the Suicune to protect, so I just went for a straight up Leech Seed on the Aegislash and a Trick Room on my side. Um, I just honestly thought, you know, Suicune's not going to want to stay in here. Uh, I have a Ferrothorn, they usually run Power Whip. Uh, he can't really touch me outside of Ice Beam. He's already burnt, so, you know, it's basically dead at this point. Um, so I just, you know, I said for the hell of it, I'm going to go for Seed Bomb. The worst case scenario, he switches into Heracross, and I can just finish it off next turn. Not a big deal. Um, plus, my Dust Pops will be going down this turn. I, w I got Pain Split off just to get some damage off onto this Age of Slash. Uh, my best bet probably was to go for a Nightshade. It would have done a lot more damage. Um, and... In general, it just would have done a little bit more damage. But that's fine, you know, I still have Leech Seed going off on it. Uh, and I do have a Tyrantar in the back, which I want to think, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking it's probably going to be a little slower than this Age of Slash. And since we're in Trick Room, that's going to be pretty good. Um, but right now, my biggest threat is the Heracross. 
So, I'm not going to actually attack the Aegis Slash, because with Sand and my Assault Vest, I will be able to take the Flash Cannon. Now, he goes for Wide Guard, which I loved, because not only... I went for a Leech Seed onto the Heracross, just in the slightest case that my Fire Punch does not take it out. I Just just in case, you know, you never know. I could have Seed Bombed the Aegis Slash, but I didn't really feel like it. So, I did actually Fire Punch the Heracross, and that actually worked out pretty well for me. Um, and this Aegis Slash basically can't beat me at this point. Um, I'm just gonna go for Seed Bomb, and I didn't think it would KO, but honestly, it did. And that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. So, right now we're 1-1. One one. Uh, it's best 2 out of 3. I think this is round 5? Yeah, let's just say it's round 5, that makes sense. Um, so this is gonna be the final battle. Um, I really, really like the combo that I let off with, the, I, uh, the, the combo from the last battle. It worked really well for me. Um, Cradley can be dead weight sometimes. It doesn't really do a lot of damage at, like you want it to. And it's a little unfortunate. So I'm going to start off with Camerupt and Dusclops. You know, the threat of Cradley in the back does, like, it kind of makes it so... Suicune doesn't really want to Scald, it just kind of wants to go for the Ice Beams, uh, so I'm kind of hoping I can still keep that up. Um, and, and we see, you know, we, we already knew the items were Citrus and Weakness Policy, so that didn't really give us any information that we didn't need to already know. Um, didn't need to know that we knew already. Yeah, okay, that, that was a weird <laughs> phrasing. Um, so I'm going to protect here, I'm expecting a double up into, or what have you, whatever, either way. Um, he actually goes for Snarl. Um, again, I think he was predicting me to go into Cradily here, um, which is really good, because it, it just puts a lot of pressure, and if like you make the wrong decision, it's going to end badly. Um, so he does go for Shadow Ball, he did double into the double into the Dusclops with the Shadow Ball Snarl combo, but I am going to be able to get Trick Room up here. Which is fantastic, because that is definitely what I need to get done. And you know, I was debating, should I switch out the camera up to, you know, last turn, last battle, I I threatened the Cradily a lot, but I never actually switched out. So I figured he'd call me on that bluff and actually, you know, and actually, um, just go for the Scald on my camera up. Uh, so I bring him in my Ferrothorn for the camera up spot, and I bring Tyrantar in to take the Shadow Ball. Um, and I know I'm gonna take that very well, and he does hit me, and I take that very well. Um, and he does go for Scald, so I did call him on that. Um, he, I, I was hoping no, no burn, but even if he did burn me, which he does, uh, it's not a big deal, because mainly what Ferrothorn's there to do is just set up Leech Seeds and just kind of sit there and hope for the best, you know? Um, so, again, you know, I was really expecting the Aegis Slash to go for either a King Shield or a Wide Guard. Um, and Suicune right now is probably the biggest threat to my team, so I'm gonna actually, I do believe, um, crunch into the Suicune and go for Leech Seed on the Aegis Slash because, you know, I, I figured it was gonna go for King Shield, so I'm not gonna be able to get an attack off, so the best thing I can do is just go for a Leech Seed and, and that will work. Um, and I crunch into the Suicune because it's my strongest attack and he has Wide Guard and I don't wanna, you know, mess around with that, you know, I just, I just wanna go straight for the kills. Um, and especially since Aegis Slash hasn't revealed, um, Sacred Sword, which I... It doesn't have it. I didn't write down King Shield, but it has four moves and it doesn't have Sacred Sword. So it really cannot beat my Tyrantar one on one. Um, so I'm not too concerned about it. As long as I don't proc its weakness policy, of course. So I get a Leech Seed up on the Aegis Slash and the Suicune. We get the defense drop. I don't know if that actually comes into play anywhere. Um, I I'm not entirely sure, but either way. Now he's going to go for Shadow Ball onto the Pharaoh Thorn, which is kind of not great. He does get a crit on me, which is. A little unfortunate now, he does go for Scald on my Tarantar, and I'm like, praying, please do not get a burn, and it doesn't, so thankfully, I, I get away from that turn pr relatively safely. Um, you know, my Ferrothorn is getting really low in HP, though, and I'm pretty sure the Aegis Slash is going to want to take me out from here. Um, it, it's like, I kind of want to say he's going to do it. He's going to go for that attack, he's going to try his hardest to take me out there. Um, because Ferrothorn can be an issue. Uh, it, with Leech Seeds up, it's very survivable. Um, I'm gaining more HP than I'm losing. So, overall, it's not a bad deal for me. Now, this is probably my favorite turn ever. Um, I, since I was protecting with Ferrothorn, I wanted to get some damage off on the Aegis Slash. So, instead of going for Crunch, I actually go for Rock Slide. 
That's right. I wanted to get just a tad bit of damage off on the Age of Slash. Maybe get a flinch. I wasn't really shooting for the flinch. I just wanted to, you know, since I wasn't going to be attacking it at all. I just wanted to get some damage off. And it turned out to be an amazing turn for me because he switches into the Talon Flame. Not really sure why. I think he might have just wanted to cut down on my Ferrothorn survivability with the Leech Seed. But either way, it works really well in my favor because I just... I, on a whim, I was just like, you know what, since I, I just want to get damage on this Aegislash, Slash, and I go for it. Um, so in comes the Heracross, and um, I'm kind of expecting, you know, I think Trick Room might have just gone out. I don't exactly know what happened, but I'm expecting him to just go straight for the close combat into my um, Dust Clops. You know, I'm still trying really hard to not proc this weakness policy because I'm not exactly ready to take out the Aegislash. Slash. Um, and he does go for Shadow Ball, and it's like, oh, not on the Dust Clops, and it's not on the Dust Clops. Now, my Ferrothorn does go down here, which is very unfortunate, because I, I did go for Leech Seed onto the Heracross, um, but at the same time, it's not a big deal. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my camera up, which immediately threatens his his two Pokemon. Like, he, he basically, he cannot double into the Dust Clops here. He basically, if he wants to come out of this turn alive, he either has to wide guard and attack the um, Camerupt, or, or double into the Camerupt. However, what he does is he actually goes for the Pin Missile on my Dusclops, um, which I thought was pretty interesting because uh, Ghost does resist Bug, and I was pretty confident in surviving this, and it was getting close, and I wasn't counting, and I do survive. Um, and I had actually completely predicted the wide guard and just went for a straight up Earth Power onto the Aegis Slash because, um, yeah, I mean, basically, my, my thought process was the best, like, the only way he would have been able to come out of that turn alive, basically, because I think I was down to my last two Pokemon here. Um, no, I had Tyrantar in the back, um, and, and Heracross can beat Tyrantar pretty easily. Uh, the only way he would basically win that round is if he did, in fact, just go straight for the camera up doubled into it because trick room or not you know his team is still pretty slow and it, it would still work so um i just actually unfortunately i i went for the earth power onto the suicune i kind of thought it would take it out but he actually scalds right into the dust clops instead i went for the pain split on the heracross because it had a lot of hp left and i would have gotten that uh, that would have been very good uh, for survivability, but right now I'm in literally I'm in the win condition right now. Um, just gonna, a heat wave rock slide combo will be more than enough to take out my opponent, um, and that's just what I'm gonna do. Um, heat wave and rock slide, but I don't even need the rock slide. Heat wave is more than enough to take out the Suicune uh, and the Heracross. So that's gonna be a great three games. Really fun, very very interesting, very entertaining. Um, I don't agree with the last play with the Dust Clops and the Aegis Slash. Um, definitely should have just attacked the camera up. Um, I didn't have Trick Room up. It definitely would have outsped me. Um, but either way, it was very well played battles, very entertaining, and I had a lot of fun. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Peace. Oh, man. <laughs> Mr. President. Wow. Look at that.